Thursday, October 2nd, 2008. I'm Joanne and this is Rocket Boo. A recent study by the United States Wildlife Conservation Society has unexpectedly proven that black bears and humans are related. Okay, maybe not genetically. However, the study conducted over a 10-year period studied 12 black bears living in and around Lake Tahoe, Nevada, with 10 wild bears living in the outlying woodlands, found that urban bears are not only bigger, thanks to a diet high in garbage, but are also impregnated on average three years earlier and more likely to meet a violent end, much like their urban human cohabitants. In Scotland, officials are also concerned about wildlife. 60 high-end Landstrom turbines used for converting tidal power to electricity have been proposed for installation off the Scottish coast. If the proposal is accepted, it could devastate the native marine life, but it would benefit the rightful owners of the food chain's top spot by powering 40,000 homes with good old renewable energy by 2020. I guess you got to always have concerned people. Like the Pope. It's been a while since we've seen the breakdancing Pope. Oh, and as usual, it's not that Pope. It's this Pope. The first solar panel installation on the roof of Vatican City's Papal Audience Hall is underway, and once completed, the photovoltaic cells will produce enough electricity to both heat and illuminate the entire main hall. Vatican officials and visitors alike will not only see the light, they'll feel it too. Like those looking for the missing shadows of Paris. Hmm, let's discuss. Looking to add a little visual disturbance to the urban fabric, architects Herzog and de Muron have devised Le Poget Triangle. Its square base extends into a vertical city, perceived as being pyramidal from one angle, yet thin and triangular from another. The configuration eliminates shadows from Le Poget on the buildings below. Oh, so clever. Yet, architectural peanuts compared to the sliced up, diced up and pulled apart Walter Towers proposed for Prague in the Czech Republic. Looking like four buildings, but only one, the building keeps the old Prague tradition of grouped buildings but pairs it with the sprawling surface area of the western skyscraper. Undoubtedly maximising its potential for carbon contributions. Could be the perfect test site for a new carbon capturing concept from Calgary, Canada where scientists have figured out how to remove carbon directly from the air. Using 100 kilowatts of electricity, one square meter of a mysterious scrubbing material can rid our carbon-crushed world of 20 tons of CO2 per year. And that's not even the best part. Because the scrubbing material can be placed anywhere, companies that use the technology can pollute in one location and clean another cheaper location. Saving money. Speaking of being penny-wise in these troubled times, a group of Stanford University researchers have developed the Quake Catcher Network, crowdsourcing the average layman's accelerometer-sporting laptop to detect earthquakes. Sure, a $10,000 seismometer can detect an earthquake thousands of miles away, but accelerometers aren't as susceptible to damage from local quakes making them more reliable for collecting valuable quake data in such situations. Once said laptops are also GPS equipped. Oh well, soon enough. In the meantime, we'll just have to be content seeing the light in wacky solar-powered office buildings, going home to our tidal-powered homes, and enjoying a splendid dinner of turbine-tattered Scottish fish.